and welcome back to Flash University. In this installment, we're going to continue with our Xenon troubleshooting steps by taking a closer look at the high voltage circuit and walk through three different isolation steps to identify where a failure could lie in this critical circuit. Now, one of our first three steps was to identify if the high voltage warning lamp was illuminated. It's important to note that the lamp itself is not a complete indication if high voltage is present. It's meant to be an indicator lamp for technician safety. Always trust what your meter tells you. The lamp can illuminate at around 50 volts DC, but as we talked about, there needs to be a positive 500 volts DC on the red wire of TB2 and a negative 500 volts DC on the blue wire of TB2 so the flash head can operate correctly. We begin by checking on TB2 pin 1 to ground. We should see around 480 to 580 volts DC and make sure you're seeing that positive indication. Next step, take a look at TB2 pin 3 to ground and verify negative 480 to 580 volts DC. It's critical that you see a difference in polarity. Next, determine if the cable run or something inside the flash head could be affecting the production of high voltage from the power converter. We'll do this by isolating the tower load and removing the red and blue wires from TB2. Once the cable is removed, power the unit back on and see if there's any improvements in the voltage readings. If the voltage has returned to normal ranges, there's definitely an issue on the tower. Verify the cable runs and check for damage or splices, and then check the inside connections of the flash head. If removing the tower load didn't help, our next step is to isolate the capacitors from the high voltage circuit. Using high voltage insulated pliers, remove the five wires leading from behind the chassis just above the HV warning lamp. Once removed, we'll retest with our digital voltmeter. If the voltage has returned at this stage to normal readings, there's an issue with one or more of the capacitors. There are five things to consider when trying to diagnose failures within the capacitor bank. Plus or minus 10% of the original stated value of the capacitor in microfarads, shorted or open capacitors, leaking capacitors, swollen capacitors, and dented capacitors. If any of the caps fall into the above mentioned categories, they should be replaced immediately. Now let's take a closer look at how to formally test a capacitor. First isolate the capacitor in question by removing the jumper wires and place your meter into the microfarads setting. Then read across the top and bottom of the capacitor and verify your readings. The stated value should be within 10% of the testing value. If reading low, please replace the cap. If high voltage still hasn't returned, our last step is to go to the source and verify the voltage supply from the T1 power transformer. Simply loosen the two screws that secure the red light module above the transformer. Slide the red light module off to the side and make sure it doesn't come in contact with the back of the door switch or the white three position interlock switch. Remove the white red, white green, and white orange wires from pins 5, 6, and 7. Power the unit on and place your meter into AC voltage and read across pins 5 and 6. You should see around 480 to 580 volts AC. You should see around the same voltages when you test across pins 6 and 7. If AC voltage is within these ranges, the T1 is operating correctly and you should replace the high voltage rectifier board. If the voltage is not within these ranges, the T1 transformer itself will need to be replaced. Well, that's our close-up look at the high voltage path in the PC324. Next time, we'll take a closer look at the trigger circuit. And don't forget to visit flashtechnology.com for more videos, helpful installation tips, product manuals, and more.